in diversity, we are honored in community life. Good afternoon, beloved in the Lord. Maswera say, the Chona Gardens. Whoever has heard me giving a speech somewhere, my chair picked something that I like so much, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I've come to be so convinced that without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. Yes. I become so convinced that he is the most forgotten person. And yet, when we come to know more about him, we can never remain the same. I so much become so convinced that without the Holy Spirit, there can be no unity. He is the spirit of unity. He is the one that can make us one. He is the one that can make us community. By the way, the word community etymologically comes from the Latin word communitas. Con means together. Munis means common, shared by all and many. So though many we are, the Holy Spirit can make us and does make us into one. Before we can invoke him, maybe in song, there is something I want to say about him. That the Holy Spirit, there are three things every believer must know about the Holy Spirit. And again, there are three things that he does in the life of Christ that he wants to do in your life. Are we together? Yes. When we look to Christ, we can learn something more about the Holy Spirit. Now about him, there are three things that you must know, even you who are being inducted, you must know this. Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. He is not any funny thing or any force or anything, but the Holy Spirit is God. There may be images, doubts, or anything, but those symbolize, oh, he appears as he likes, but he is God. And secondly, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. Meaning, you can talk to him. Meaning, you can relate with him. Meaning, you can get close to him. Meaning, you can come to know him. You can make a friendship with the Holy Spirit. He is a divine person. And thirdly, the Holy Spirit is here. Where is he? He is here. The Holy Spirit is God. And for God, there is only presence, present everywhere. So he is here. He is in my heart. He is in your heart. For God, there is no limit. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. And for God, he knows everything. He is omniscient. So this Holy Spirit who is God is present here. And he is present in your heart. So once you know that, your life cannot remain the same. You can talk to him, you can relate to him, and he is the source of this unity. Without him, the Holy Spirit, we cannot know him. I mean, we cannot be community. And then I said, there are three things again that this same Holy Spirit does in the life of Christ that he wants to do in our life. And this we can see in Luke 4, verse 1, and Luke 4, verse 18. In Luke 4, verse 1, we read that Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan. Jesus was what? Full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Someone earlier on said, we are under a home So Jesus also was what? Full of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit wants to fill you. You know, that's what he wants. He wants to, he wants you to be full of him. He wants to fill your heart. Not all these many things that are there in your life, but he wants to fill your heart. And secondly, in the same verse again, in Luke 4 verse 1, it says, And then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. So he is not only, he is full, like he is of the Holy Spirit. And then again, he 
does what? He leads him. You know, Jesus himself, who is God also, is being led by his oh, other, you know? So the Holy Spirit wants to lead you. Sometimes many things lead us, funny things lead us, but he wants to lead you. And so two things now. We said he wants to fill you like he filled Jesus. He wants to lead you like he did what? He lead Jesus. And then in Luke 4, verse 18, he says, this is now Jesus teaching. He says, the Holy the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You know? He has what? Anointed me. So we can see that the Holy Spirit fills, the Holy Spirit leads, and the Holy Spirit does what? Anoint. He anoints. Anointing is about empowerment, you know? You can do your things. You can be a good preacher, but without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, your preaching cannot touch us. You can be a good leader, but without the Holy Spirit anointing, your leadership would not change anything meaningful. You can be gifted in anything, but without that anointing, anointing is about the power to do something. It's about the empowerment that God is giving you as a believer. We may want to build community as it ends, but without this Holy Spirit, who is God, who is among us, who is all powerful, we cannot build community. So he is the empowerment for that community. So just for a while, we just want to invoke you. Just to invite you in your heart. And remember what he shared his word. And he's also the author of the word, you know? The word of God says all scripture is inspired. Inspired means breathed into. Breathed by who? By God, you know? And it is good for teaching, for instruction. So we, you just invite him, speak to him. Say, Holy Spirit, you are the author of the word, you know? Speak your word in me. Let this word find a place in my heart that I may not remain the same. And believe you me, he who is everywhere, he who is in your heart, would hear you and will answer you. Let us just invite him in song. What, what to my way out to my Mighty Lord and King, come. 
our hearts are ready for you. Speak your word to us. Let this word take root in our hearts that we may not remain the same but may become more and more like Christ who is our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. You know our lives. You know our hearts. Have your way in us. Have your way in our communities. Have your way in all that you do. May our groups not remain the same, but with you become communities with diversity. May St. Anne's not remain the same, but with you become anointed to build this community in themselves, in their families, and wherever they are. Holy Spirit, mighty God, you are welcome. We make our prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so um, we continue, already we're talking about something here, that for us to speak about community, we need the person of the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, some years ago, I was read a book, and there was an article by a man called uh, Sidney J. Harris. And he says something beautiful. He says, there are people who wish other people could disappear, you know? And in their wish that they could disappear, they don't realize that there is an enemy inside the heart. Now get his word. It says the enemy is within each and every one of us. And this enemy makes us see our differences as more important than our similarities. He says the enemy is where is within the heart. And this enemy makes us see our differences as more important than our similarities. When we speak about community, we are speaking about that diversity that comes together, where we are emphasizing what is common between each and every one of us, where we are highlighting what is so important. And it goes on to say, some years ago, the Germans, some German people wish the Jews could disappear, you know? And the massacre happened. They wished a certain people would disappear from the earth. Then it says now, what they don't realize is this, that now those people can disappear, but the enemy still remains inside the heart because the enemy is inside us, you know? Now, Let's bring that teaching to our homes, to our, to our Zimbabwe. If, for example, we can say we are different, perhaps as in Jemele and also as Shona, right? There's a difference in language in tribe, all right? And maybe, for example, the Jemele would wish that the Shona would disappear. <laughs> and maybe God allows it to happen, then the Jemele remain on their own now. <laughs> now when they are on their own, they begin to see something. That's how. Amongst us, who call the Zansi. You know, most of the Zansi, they came all the way from South Africa, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they came from the royal family, right? Who call the Abenta, who were picked also on the way? How? Who call the Makhole, who were found also towards the end, right? So now, even among themselves, now the intervener will see how we are different, you know? And then maybe other other sons will say, let our holy and others disappear. We remain on our own. Now when they are on their own, they'll be like, ah, kulo kumalo, you know? Kulo 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 And what if the kumalo will say, ah, let others disappear. Then now you are getting on your own now as kumalo. Then again you will see, there are those who come from the kumalo as royal household, you know? Then there are other kumalos, you know? And even those can disappear and leave the Kumalos alone. Now even when they're on their own, they'll be like, actually, this one is the family where the king comes from. So the enemy keeps dividing and dividing and dividing. What, what if the Shonas who say, let the terrorists disappear, let's remain on their own, and God allows it, and then you're now on your own. They'll be like, ah, but among us, they 
the Zulu, there's Kalanga, uh, Karanga, there's Banyika light. Certainly. Why? Because the enemy is where? Is within. And it is the enemy that does not want community. It is the enemy that does not want unity. It is the enemy that cries division. So we need, as Father spoke also in the morning today, that there is an enemy called the devil who does not want unity. When we read in John 10, verse 10, there's a beautiful verse there that the Lord Jesus says. You know, it says the thief has come only to kill, to scatter, and to destroy. So when we build community, let's be aware there's a force that disturbs that destroys, that scatters, and that force is the enemy who is where, who is inside the heart. And this enemy wants everyone else to appear. And when that happens, the division continues because the enemy remains inside the heart. So John 10 verse 10 continues and says, But I have come that you may have life and have life in its fullness abundance. The Lord wishes to give us community and we are the ones to work together. Now let us imagine everyone disappears and suddenly we are remaining only with the ends. You know? For the sake of we are others but we are a few that follows who we are yeah. under, right? Now imagine we the women of St. Anne are now remaining on our own. What is our division? Remove totality. Sometimes in other places, there's a war between society and society. Remove totality. Now we're on our own. What is our division? You begin to hear there are those who have us. You know, those who are married. What do you do? You know, they are married. They are married. They are Now, they have got their own class. Some years ago, some, uh, some other country, I was in a parish where there was even a group called the Big 15, you know? Oh. This was a selection of the richest 50 of the parish. I don't know how they show themselves, but they were good 15. And I can confess to you, uh, it was through them that I had my first flight. <laughs> <laughs> And this enemy is within each and every one of us. 
He makes us see our differences as more important than our similarities. You know? There's so much common amongst us. Gossip. Sometimes there's so much uh, gossip within uh, our associations. I think Father said something about that Saturday. That the one who begins the gossip knows the truth, you know? Then the rest they hear, but they also, they also spread. But nonetheless, gossip becomes one of those things that kill and destroy and divide us. You know, sometimes it's not our even things we do not know about. We heard this from someone. We we'll say this about someone, but when we say it, we get short. I was there and I saw it myself. And the story goes and on and on and on. And that causes division over the years. It causes wounds and hurts of our people. There is so much gossip that happens in the communities. We need to read it from our hearts. One time I remember in the Eastern Parish, I was, we were beginning Lent, you know? So I said, this season, I'm inviting uh, the fathers, please, fathers, uh, this land, let's not drink, let's spend time with family. Go from work, go to home, from hustling, go home, fair and fine. Then I said to the mothers, just one thing only for this land and season, uh, do not go see. Mother said, ah, Baba, what did you say? You know, what did you know, what did you know, what did you know, and you're even open, if you don't go see, what are we going to do, you know? <laughs> what else do we do? For some people, it has become part of their part and parcel of their lives, right? That without gossip, they know we cannot do nothing. Even as we try together, we want to be about someone. Even as we think something about someone. And without someone, we have nothing amongst ourselves. So I am challenging us from today to be ambassadors of goodwill. Whenever someone comes to you, ask them simple questions. Is it true? Even if it's true, is it necessary? Even if it is so, is it kind, you know? So ask those questions and be the one that brings the truth. There is also another uh, divider that I see. I don't know here, but I hear about it also. This divider is trusting in spiritual other people, you know? I don't know, because I heard that even in UK now, uh, they, they are now healers now among us. Traditional healers, they say, yeah, my example, you know? People, they want to consult. I, I was amazed. I thought maybe his uncle was amazed in Africa. No, they came also, you know? <laughs> they, they, they are amongst us. And there are some who go there to hear. And when they go there to hear, when they go there to hear, they are told you would uh, so and so is the one who wants to kill you, you know? Your, your papers are not coming through because my job is not heavy about you, you know? <laughs> like we are convinced about such, a, such lies. It reminds me one time when we were studying some <clears throat> African tradition, uh, churches. They call them sects, some people. So we thought, you know what? Let's go and speak to them ourselves, you know? It's a static group. So let's go and speak to these people themselves. And the bigger group that is there that we know is in my swing world, because I'm ready. Let's go and see for ourselves. It is said these people can see, you know? They can see, you know? <laughs> so I now go with these friends of mine to to research. What exactly are you doing? How do you begin it? How does it go? Where does it end? Why are many Africans, even Catholics, even pastors coming to you, you know? What is there that you have? So when we got there, we must go to a long drive all the way from Bulawayo through the rough roads, uh, first the good road, then into the rough road of Masingo, through the mountains and the details and whatever, the stones, and finally we arrived. And as we arrived, there were so many people. Believe you me, there were even Catholics I know, you know? Now I do not know whether can I go and say to them, hey, I come for the stage, you know? And I go and see, they are thinking, you know, uh, what the father said, you know? The 
after that. So lucky we get the camera and the booklet when they allow us to record. But there are many people there. Quite interesting. So now we approach this man. Uh, he's sitting there. Uh, he's wearing his white garments and he's standing there. There's a group of, uh, of some ladies next to him there. You know, young ladies who are, I think, the assistant to him. And as we come through, we want to speak to him. And I strike the shoulder. My group two also stuck my shoulder. I can say a few words. So I think, let me try English. Uh, good, uh, good, good, I don't know say. My name is, how's it? And, oh, no, you know, I can see. <laughs> so, okay, so don't, let's, not, let's give me a chance to speak, you know? And as he's speaking, the women that are going, eh, man, yo, yo.
can we build community? On what basis then can we build community? Yesterday I was inspired by Father Fernando's talk. He said he would just bring three words, you know, uh, about one journey, uh, in Tanyero and what? Okay. So from three words, he built up a good thing. I said, ah, why not? Now also from three words, I'm going to add now, that for us to build community, we need to have the three C's in our lives. Not the CCC, that is the story, no, but the, but the just three C. I used to be able to talk it even before CCC was formed. I mean, I'm not inspired by them. So the three C's, when we can have that in our minds, it becomes so important as a basis of understanding and operation. And these three C's stand for this. The first C, cold. Cold. Not to turn around, but to be cold. 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 cold connected and commissioned as the basis of community. Called by God, connected to God and to one another through God, through the Spirit, and commissioned for the work of God. If we can have those three things in our minds, actually, uh, when one of them was speaking, the newcomers, she said, I have discovered something that actually it is not I who chose to be sent A. It was God who did what? Who chose me. I was chosen. And there is a base in our She's confirming what I have prepared here. This is a simple word saying, uh, that's a confirmation. So in John 15, my dear sister, uh, John 15, verse 16, that's what verse that you mentioned. In John 15, verse 16, it says, You did not choose me. You know, that's God saying it. It is not you who chose me, but it is I who did what? Who chose you. So it is God himself who called you. And when you, when you can believe that about yourself, you must then believe it also about someone else. You know? I have heard people say to other people, no, you cannot be sent in, you know? You cannot be sent in. Some years ago, some other place, some other parish, there was a ministry of evangelization. So we went to the community, we preached the gospel, we said we are going to go to their homes, if you're not believers, and we preached the gospel, and believe you me, one well-known prostitute decided to become a Catholic. But she is well known in the whole village. She is well known in the whole township, you know, that this one is number one, you know. She is dangerous, you know. She is a danger. And now on a Sunday, when we were welcoming the new ones, they saw the prostitute standing there saying amen to Jesus, you know. As for me, I had rejoiced, you know. I was so happy that here is the Lord sheep. He has come. She has come to God's house. And she began the classes of the catechism and life. And immediately she was drawn to Zagayamuya and uh, you know, I am coming today. I want to be there, you know. I tell you. Ah yeah, 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 yeah. But now, Mama, I tell you. So when she came there now to the association, and she is well known, and they're all afraid of her, why is she here? And some are like, maybe she's here because she has seen our husband. No? Maybe she's here. I think that was better. So in some way, saying, maybe she's here because she has seen father. You know? Because there's our husband. And they came to me and said, Father, why can't you make her to join the young adults? You know? Because there is no order in that group. You know? It's like, no, there is order there. And the order there. Let her join when the Lord is what? Is leading her. So no matter who you are, how you are, where you are from, when God calls you, it is God who calls you. No matter what you have done, it is God who does what, who calls you. You know, among the sinners or the saints, 
There is no saint without a past, all right? Yes. And there is no sinner without a future. So when the sinner comes, it is a new beginning for her. When the saint goes on, it is the strength of the journey now. So she said, I am joining. So they came to me, the committee, the whole committee, including the elders, you know, the teachers. They said, Father, we are not yet convinced that she is already repentant, you know? What are they convinced? I said, don't worry, she has got time. She's going to start the Catechist University. Yeah? She's going to do confession secondly. Then she can be inducted. So don't worry, just genuinely say, oh, Father, what if our husbands come to the meeting? <laughs> she must stay there. She is a member there. What did they do? People of now, there's a sickness on of thousands. They went straight to the bishop, you know? <laughs> hey, there is a prostitute who has joined our association. And the bishop called me. And know what he said, the bishop? It was very clear. Let's keep on doing the work of the organization. <laughs> But do, but do take time before the inductions, you know? Make sure that, uh, okay, and let protect it. Let him not actually be what? Be destroyed in her quest to become. Mm -hmm. So I went back with more zeal. All the prostitutes can come now. <laughs> I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you to be my prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. So it is the Lord who calls. I was called and you were called. And also, when the Lord calls, he calls different characters. That is what makes our diversity. He does not call similar persons. He calls what? Diverse persons to form the community. So as St. Anne's here, we are all different. We are all unique in our uniqueness, you know? We are all special in our own ways. But God calls us as we are. Think of this, the disciples. Judas is coming, you know? A thief, you know? A thief, even a man says that thief, yeah? You know? Even a man says that thief, you know? And God called the thief to say, come, you my disciple. Judas, one day, someone was giving me testimony since I was preaching, that actually a woman came who was weeping on the floor of Jesus. Yeah? She used the ointment, and Jesus was like, ah, but Lord, why can this be sold and the money be given to who? To the poor. Why? Because he knew that he steals from the common farm, says John's gospel. So the Lord calls even thieves, you know, but we should not remain as thieves, right? The Lord calls us all transformation. Think of the other disciple, for example, Bartholomew, Nathaniel. Nathaniel was the holiest of disciples. When he came, the Lord says, Oh, what a Jew, incapable of any fault. You know? So the Lord even did honor him with that. And so even the mama's here, there are very good people here, you know? There are people who are incapable of deceit here among us. And same time again, the things you know, among us, you know? So we put everything, you know? We put the whole salad together, the food salad together, you know? The good, the bad, the bitter, the sweet. And that is the diversity that marks the disciples. So what am, what am I saying? That we should not be the ones who do what? Who do judge other people. Peter, fast, fast. Peter, while I'm angry, as they say, you know? Peter was very fast. Matthew, test collector, James and John, I love those two, <coughs> James and John, those two are something interesting, James and John, there's something interesting, one time they came with their mother to the Lord, what did they say, Lord, we know you are king, when you come as king, make me, oh, no, this was a man, grant that this my son can sit at your right, you know, and this one also sit at your left, you know. So it's like more like in Zimbabwe, a president make these two to be your vice president, you know. His own son. So also among us, there are people who have power, shame, you know. There are people who have power, and sometimes some of them are good. They have power and they deliver, you know. Wonderful. Then there are some who have power and don't deliver again, you know. So we need to come to realize that. So we're still speaking about being called. And when we are called and be, it is the Lord who calls. And every call is special to him. You are special, you are unique, and so is your neighbor. I want you to say something to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, the divine in me. Honor the divine in you. Again, the divine in me. Honor the divine in you. For two things in that verse, to be with him 
and to be apostles. You know, do you hear that? He called them to be first with him and to be sent by him to be apostles. So there are two reasons why they're called. First and foremost, to be with Jesus and then second, to, to what? To be sent by him. So that is the connection. We are called for a connection that we must be connected with the Lord. Mark 3, verse 14. We are called for a connection, a connection with God and with one another. We are called to be contemplatives in action. A connection with Jesus is the basis of connection with others. In John 15, verse 5, he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So when we are called as disciples, we are called for a connection with him. And that connection must bear fruit, fruit that we love. So the connection has got a transcendental value, up and a side value, horizontal, like a cross. We are called to connect to God and then to one another. Our connection with God assures our connection with one another. I love this statement. The closer we come to God, is the closer we come to one another. Again, the closer we come to God, is the closer we come to one another. And the closer we come to one another, is the closer we come to God, you know? So we need that statement. The closer we come to God, is the closer we come to one another. I will just give a few verses, then maybe we can take a break and then continue, right? Yes. All right, so in 1 Corinthians 12, Verses 12 27. Paul speaks about unity and diversity of Christians. If one part suffers, every part suffers because we are one. It is God who has designed and placed parts as it desires. Even weaker parts are indispensable. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 11. Many gifts, but the same Holy Spirit. Gifts to be used for the common good. So, in our connection with one another, we need to celebrate differences, celebrate differences, inclusive community, shared humanity, mutual respect, collaboration. In conclusion, for this session, community life is about connection. How connected am I to God, to the other? Am I playing my part in community building, not to forget the spirit of Ubuntu? So, beloved in the Lord, what I've been saying in this first session, our next session will be just brief and, and, and questions. What I've been saying here is this. We are called by God, and we must be connected. After the previous talk about the connection, right? And the conclusion. So, we are called, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, it is God who calls you for this what? For this connection then we need to connect to God and to one another. That's the basis of community. And then we'll speak about also the commission. So thank you for listening, and may God bless you always.